Good morning. School shootings have devastated communities across the country and have now left an indelible mark on ours. Watching the survivors of Monday's attack at Central Visual and Performing Arts High School talk about what they had just been through was incredibly difficult to watch. Why are we allowing this culture of violence to continue? And why are we allowing this to happen to our children? And I've repeatedly called for common sense gun laws, something more than two thirds of Americans support. Yet state and federal legislators balk, bowing to the pressure of the gun lobby. We should have universal background checks and red flag laws. And again, these actions are overwhelmingly supported by our country. So why are Republicans going against the wishes of our country? What can we do at the local level to continue to push for those in Congress in Jefferson City to make public safety a priority? And before you go to the polls in a few weeks, find out who is making the safety of our children a priority. Otherwise, we'll be here once again mourning the loss of teachers and innocent children. Schools should be a safe place to learn and build futures, not a shooting range with military grade weapons. And the conversation will not fade. We cannot let the lives lost Monday just be another startling statistic when talking about gun violence in schools. And to honor them, I'll stand beside uh, strong advocates for gun safety here in St. Louis County, across the region, and across the state. We languish as a state because we don't want to take bold action. And bold action in this case is following the will of people and putting in place common sense gun laws. I have not and I will not cower to bullies like the NRA or MAGA Republicans who thinks freedom means dodging bullets in schools, supermarkets, movie theaters, and workplaces. And remember this, Republican Missouri legislators passed a law declaring that federal gun laws will not be recognized or enforced in Missouri. And the Republican Attorney, Attorney General is seeking higher office as he defends the law, which bars local police and prosecutors from help, helping federal officials enforce gun laws. And my administration, Jackson County, and the city of St. Louis are challenging the law in court. And this law is dangerous because it's a slap in the face to public safety. And not only must we work collaboratively to look at how we can keep guns out of the hands of killers, but we must also expand mental health services that have been underfunded for decades, leaving wide gaps in health care services. Talking about mental health services also erases the stigma, and it also helps those who need someone to talk to feel comfortable in doing so. As was said immediately after Monday's shooting, it's okay to not be okay, and it's okay to seek help. There are people available to listen and to help you find your way out of a bad spot and out of a sense of helplessness. Our children have been through so much over the past few years. A pandemic forced online learning across the country. And more recently, high radiation levels at Jana Elementary School in Florissant forced this closing of a school mid-semester. And now our children are trying to understand why someone would walk into a St. Louis school with 600 rounds of ammunition and inflict so much harm. We were fortunate in St. Louis County to have the Children's Service Fund. It's, uh, it was approved in 2008 by county voters. It's a quarter of a cent sales tax that generates nearly $45 million a year. And those tax dollars go to fund more than 80 organizations who all provide crucial mental health services to children. And with us today is Emily Koenig, Executive Director of the Children's Service Fund, and she'll be able to answer any questions about the fund or the great work they're doing and her team in the county. One of the local organizations that receives financial support from the Children's Service Fund is Behavioral Health Response. Bart Andrews, a Chief Clinical Officer with Behavioral Health Response, has joined me today, and I'd like to turn the podium over to him and let him tell you about his organization. Good morning. I am really honored that the county executive allowed me to spend some time talking to you all this morning about what's going on, what we can do, and to promote the Youth Connection Helpline. The Youth Connection Helpline was created in 2010 
with funding that the St. Louis County Children's Service Fund gathered to help our youth. The whole purpose of the Youth Connection Helpline was to make sure that youth could get services by phone, by text, by chat, or on site 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The Youth Connection Helpline that the county created was made exactly for situations like this. These school shootings are tragic. They impact everyone, the youth and the children, the teachers that were there, the community that's impacted, and it's important we talk about that impact and what we can do about it. One of the questions that I get asked a lot is, when should children return to school? My answer is going to surprise you. Right away, immediately. If we've learned anything about trauma, it's that we need to get back into our routine as soon as possible. The second piece of this is that we also need to make allowances to address the impact on our youth. We need to talk about it and not avoid it. We have lots of good research that shows that having plain, simple, honest conversations about how the trauma impacted us helps people recover. For our parents out there, your youth, your children are looking to you on how to respond to this. It's incredibly important that you establish safety and trust. Yes, they are safe. Yes, you will keep them safe. Yes, our schools are safe. Despite these tragedies, we've got to create a sense of safety for our youth. This is part of the healing process. We can't avoid this, but we got to get back to life as usual while recognizing this trauma and addressing it. For folks who need help and want help, there are a lot of resources. If you want to reach the Youth Connection Helpline, you can call 314-819-8802. Our clinicians are there. They're waiting. They will help you. You can also text Be Heard. that's B-H-E-A-R-D, to 31658. Many youth prefer to text us. That's great. And you can also chat by going to bhrstl.org. The most important thing that we can do right now is acknowledge that this happened, create hope and safety, and make sure those that need assistance can get it immediately. And that's exactly what the Youth Connection Helpline was created for. We're incredibly grateful to the Children's Service Fund and to St. Louis County because they take youth mental health seriously, and we really appreciate being a part of the community and the network of care. There are many other providers, not just BHR, that do wonderful work every day, and we wanna make sure we're getting our youth and families connected. Some final comments. Parents, you can call us about your youth. Teachers, agencies, if you call us, we will reach out. In fact, if you call, sometimes we'll reach out and call people for you. The final thing about the Youth Connection Helpline that's very special that I wanna make sure folks know about is it's not just one call. When you call, we will offer ongoing follow-up services. We will stay in touch with you until the crisis is resolved or until you tell us, I'm good, you can quit calling me. And sometimes people do that and we get it. So please, if you need anything, reach out, 314-819-8802. Thank you. Thank you, Bart. In addition to uh, the BHR, there are numerous other providers in our region that deliver high quality mental and behavioral health services. The Children's Service Fund offers an interactive map that allows users to find services near them. And the map can be found at stlcfs.org. Families are hurting and the community is hurting and thoughts and prayers are certainly appropriate, but that cannot be our only action. As a country, we must do better and these tragedies are too frequent and everyone shares the responsibility to work to prevent them. In this country, we have the right to bear arms, but we also have the responsibility to protect our children. Now, I'd like to end with a thank you to the St. Louis Metropolitan Police Department for their quick and courageous action of their officers that saved lives. The training and professionalism were highlighted in their response to this tragic event, and our community is grateful and I'd be glad to answer any questions. What um, would you say would free reign to uh, families right now that um, have been directly affected by this event, whether their parents chose a, you know, Alexandria Bell or just um, bystanders at home who have watched all this unfold? Well, um, I would say to families who were affected directly or, or um, were have to go to have kids who have to go to school and they have a lot of questions, I would say reach out. Reach out to uh, your family and your friends and a mental health professional. Talk to your teachers 
and engage some of the services that we have to offer here in St. Louis County. And that's what we're talking about. Uh, BHN and their services, um, the Children's Service Fund, I would say go to the website um, and look for uh, a service provider near, near you and access them. And uh, if you feel like you, uh, you need help, then ask for help and let us help you. Let St. Louis County help you. That's what these organizations are for. Uh, everyone should recognize that being upset by this is a normal response. And uh, you need to talk about it. You need to talk about it with your friends and your family and, and folks at school. And uh, I have to recognize that this is, uh, the gun violence is sweeping our country, it's sweeping our community, and uh, the mental health um, um, opportunities to do better in, around mental health in our community are there. Uh, we need more funding for mental health, and we need access to services that we have in our community. Um, what are you actually proposing uh, for guns? Because apparently this guy tried to buy a gun at a gun show, got red flagged, they denied him. He found some other way to do it. They're still investigating that. The police came to his house. They took the gun, the same gun he used. They gave it to another person in his family. I don't know how he got it after that. Like I said, it's still under investigation. I mean, it seemed like everything was kind of working, but no one really followed through and just, this guy really needed help. What do you say to people who are advocates of the Second Amendment, law-abiding, you know, they have their computer, you know, whatever, they, they do the right thing, but yet they feel like they're trying to take their rights away to actually own a weapon, which is our right under the Constitution. Yeah, well, in our country, we have to find a path forward around every controversial topic and every difficult question on how we balance the rights of our community and the rights of individuals. And, what, and gun laws is, is, is an example of that. We all agree that folks that have serious mental health uh, problems should not have access to guns, and we try to find a, a pathway uh, to remove them. A, a red flag law allows a judge to issue an order uh, to uh, allow law enforcement to remove a gun or guns from someone who is a danger to themselves or others. That's even something even we should all agree on. Even the family knew that this kid was a danger. Right. Right. They've been there several times, according to records we have. They did take the gun away, but why they gave it to another person and just didn't take it away, I, I don't know. Yeah, I, I think all of the details of how this individual uh, got a gun, um, lost his gun, got it back, all those details haven't been sorted out yet, and we have to let the St. Louis Metropolitan Police Department do that investigation and report on it. Um, we have a few of the facts now, but that, that is not yet complete. Uh, but in a general sense, uh, red flag laws are a good idea. They're broadly supported, and that's where we should be in Missouri. They, that, that people who have serious mental health issues who are a danger to themselves or others um, should not have access to guns, and we should all work to stop that. That's something we can all agree on. Law-abiding law citizens should be able to keep their guns, and should be able, a gun should be available for, for uh, hunting and sporting events, we, we all agree on that. What we, what we need to work together to find a path forward to is we need to figure out a way to make sure that people who have serious mental health issues or a danger to themselves or others don't have access to guns, or if they do have guns, then they're removed until, uh, until they're in the position to, to be safe with them. Uh, in Missouri, we're going in the wrong direction. Our legislature passed a law to prevent our local law enforcement from enforcing federal gun laws. That's in the wrong direction. That's why St. Louis County and the city of St. Louis and Jackson County are in court to get that law overturned. It's a, it's a terrible law and it's a, it's a, it is a slap in the face to law enforcement to, to not allow them to enforce federal gun laws or work cooperatively with, with federal agents. Um, is the Youth Connection Helpline available for both uh, people in St. Louis City and St. Louis County? And what are the exact resources that are offered with that? It's a wonderful question. Yes, the Youth Connection Helpline is available in St. Louis City, St. Louis County, St. Charles County. But anybody in the region who calls us, we will help them and get them connected to care, right? So we're not in the business of not helping folks, but that's who the program is designed for. There are so many resources that are available through the Youth Connection Helpline. We can connect people with housing resources, therapy, case management, 
school-based services. So there are so many services, there are so many providers involved. I could go on and on about the different services. And one of the things that we do as part of the Youth Connection Helpline is if somebody needs service connection, we will help them get connected, follow up with where we're making the referrals, making sure they are connected. So one of our jobs, in fact, one of the benchmarks we have is that we ensure not only that they get referrals, but they actually make a connection with those referrals and we're picked up for services. So that's one of the special things about the Youth Connection Helpline. And in fact, there's a chapter in a book about the Youth Connection Helpline and the outcomes we get by doing that tremendously assertive follow through. When people call us, we make sure they get connected to care. One phone call isn't enough. We all recognize that. So what is the follow-up between somebody calling you and actually getting this particular help that they need? Exactly. So say someone calls in with a crisis and they're having a school crisis, they're acting out at school, maybe some suicide thoughts. We could send a mobile outreach team out to them, out to their home, or sometimes the school, both happen. We'll do an evaluation. We try really hard to keep people out of the hospital whenever we can, and we do a good job at that. We'll make sure that they're safe. We'll get them connected to outpatient services, and then we will follow up. Two days, we'll follow up within two days, see how they're doing, see how the, if, the, if everybody's feeling better, everybody's safe, and we'll ask how they did with the referrals, have they made a connection, we'll follow up the referral sources and make sure that if they've reached out that they're getting connected with care, right? So if, I, if I called you on a Tuesday, I would get a response from you all on Tuesday? You, you, would, you, would, you would talk to somebody on Tuesday, we would help you immediately, and then we would set up a follow-up callback plan. And usually we'll do that initial follow-up within two days of the first call. Depending on urgency, sometimes we call people multiple times in the day and we'll call them the next day. But in routine cases, and there are routine crises, um, we'll follow up in 48 hours. Great question. Mark, could you give that number again? Sure. A number to Youth Connection Helpline is 314-819-8802. Thank you.